Hey, hey, welcome to Jessica Stories. I'm Jessica Carney, and I will be your host. This is a Christian podcast to remind you that God is in the details of your daily life and that we can always find a way to see the silver lining in all of life's experiences. I am so determined to help you grow your confidence in God and His plan for you. Hello, and welcome to today's episode. So, guess what? <laughs> I I was doing some work on my True Confidence course that I have that helps you reconnect with God and build confidence in the plan that He has for you and strengthen your relationship with Him. Anyway, I was going through it and re-watching some of the lessons that I'd created, and oh my goodness, it really helped me because... I have got into some different habits with my scripture study that have made me forget how much I love journaling while scripture studying. Anywho, when I'm talking about adding light to my life, this week after I was doing that work with my course, I was like, oh my goodness, I forgot that I love to journal <laughs> while I'm writing, reading my scriptures. So I was doing it this week and it was so so good and it just added so much light to my life it deepened my scripture understanding and just the the time I had in the scriptures was so much sweeter and richer this week because I did that and so I just want to remind you that sometimes we we learn these things about ourselves, and then we get into new habits because life happens and things shift And right now I am living in a trailer and doing my life a little bit different, which is a delight. Because of that, it has shifted my habits and which can be really great. It just so happened in my scripture study, the shift made it so that my scripture study wasn't as enriching. And when I was reminded by myself of how much joy journaling and reading my scriptures creates, I was able to just have much deeper nourishing experiences this week as I was in the scriptures. So it's like maybe if you are feeling a little funky with some things, some habits in your life, maybe remember what you used to do. Go and read some journals, whatever. Maybe you can be inspired by yourself (laughs) and you can reconnect to a habit that you had before you know, life happened (laughs) and took you in a new direction and it could bless you because that was my experience this week that really, really enhanced my life and added so much light to it. Reagan, my dog, has been, she's been kind of crazy, at least yesterday. Today we leave Twin Falls, Idaho, and we head back out camping. We're going to the Sawtooths, but because we've been in a home, Regan hasn't had quite the freedom that she desires like a mountain to run up. And yesterday she was such a snot. Oh my goodness, I swear. She got the evil eye in her and was just, she was a stinker. I mean, we all know she's a stinker, but she was a stinker. (laughs) So I'm hoping once we get into the wilderness, she will return to her new good self. (laughs) All right, my friends, Um, as I said, we are leaving to go camping again for the next while. Our truck has had some problems, so we're hoping that we're hoping we can get it figured out. We're going to see everything's up in the air and it is what it is. I think we'll be fine this next week, but we might have to do some significant work on our truck because our truck pulls our house right now, which is kind of a big deal. Anyway, that's how life is, right? There's always ups and downs. There's joys and delights and surprises. And there's things that are just a little bit of a bummer. And that is how we roll. We need opposition in all things, right? That is the theme this month. We have to experience the grand spectrum to experience the deep, deep joys. If everything was joyful and peaceful and good, Would we even know that that's what it was? I actually don't think so. When I was younger, I thought that is exactly how it needed to be. But through my life, as I've had, I guess, 
as I've grown up and had more challenges, it has totally made my joys so much deeper and sweeter. And so I try and remember that when I'm like in the thick of something yucky or in a frustration, I try and remember this is going to make the next joy, the next answered prayer, the next um, spiritual experience I have so much richer because I'm feeling this intense you know, lower, more negative feeling, right? (laughs) That's why I'm so obsessed with finding the silver lining because this is part of our experience. We learn in the scriptures that there is opposition in all things. And I want to share a story about when I was a young mum. Well, a few stories today because I think motherhood, at least in my life, has taught me the most about opposition (laughs) because suddenly you have this opportunity to raise to teach to love to guide these lovely darling humans and they have agency (laughs) and that can be really hard sometimes because when you're three years old You might use your agency to scream a lot or to bite or to hit or to do things that are not very pleasant. And as an adult who is trying so, so hard, that can not be fun. (laughs) And it has been my experience that uh, motherhood has been absolutely filled to the blim with blim to the brim with opposition with very challenging experiences and with the deepest joys and the sweetest experiences also so I want to take you back to when I have two kiddos I have two kiddos that's all I have so I had had my youngest he was just a baby he was under one years old and at this time we went and attended a congregation of our church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And it was kind of far away from our home. Often with our church, you will attend church in a geographical location. So kind of close to where you live. Well, that's within reason because depending on where you live and how many people attend church will depend on the geographical um area of your congregation but we had been asked to serve in a different location that was kind of further away to help build up that congregation and we would drive about 30 35 minutes there and Ben had the opportunity to have a leadership role in in that branch it was called a branch because it was smaller number of people that were in the congregation so most Sundays Ben would leave super early around 6 45 and he'd go and they'd do meetings prior and I would get our boys ready and leave at about 8 25 to get there in time for church to start And that was a wonderful challenge for me to get a baby and a three and a half year old ready on my own, get them in church clothes, which are really not pleasant to wear, especially my three year old. He's still, he is 13 and he hates church clothes. They are so restricting to him. Sometimes I think maybe I should design church clothes that look like church clothes but feel like pajamas because I think it would enhance the joy felt through my boys on a Sunday when they when they wear church clothing anyway I digress we go back this was a significant challenge for me to get there and sometimes I felt like Saturday night when I was going to bed I had to give myself the biggest pep talk like you've got it Jess you can do it 
put your alarm on. You're going to wake up. You're going to be amazing. You are going to make breakfast. You are going to change those diapers, wipe those mouths, clean those bodies. You are amazing. Right, I'd have to give myself these pep talks because it felt like the biggest marathon of my life every Sunday morning. And when I would get to church, it already felt like the marathon had ended. <laughs> And then a new marathon immediately began. <laughs> and Ben would sit on the stand with his responsibilities so he wouldn't sit with me in the congregation. And often I'd have to leave because one of my darling little children would be wailing or screaming about something. Because a church, a church meeting is not, it's just not a space that little humans do well <laughs> because you tend to try and be reverent try and be quiet and respectful to hear the talks that are given and to enjoy the peace that is offered and when you have little humans that just doesn't happen <laughs> and this was such a frustration to my younger self because I just thought that if I tried my hardest my children would sit there, cross-legged applesauce, and like nod and think, Oh, lovely, I love church. It's wonderful. <laughs> Which never happened or has happened since. <laughs> and I remember multiple times, there was a time when I had the privilege to be the chorister. So, I'd, you know, direct the music which was kind of a challenge when you have two little children. And I'd always ask someone to sit with my kids as I would do that. And there was one time that I'm waving my arm around and Jack is, um, well, he's probably about three and a half, four at this time. You know, at an age, people would say, they should know better to be reverent. They're old enough now. Well, no, they're not in my family, at least. And I would be waving my arm around and Jack wanted attention too, so he would just jump up and down with his blanket on the pew. And then everyone would just look up at me and then turn their head, look up down at Jack as he bounces around, look up at me, and I'm like, I'm waving my arm. I'm trying to direct your music. Someone has to intervene. <laughs> and I would have these experiences where I would just feel so humiliated. And it didn't help that I was always already so sleep deprived. I was barely able to keep my eyes awake. And I was also deprived of human connection. Because when you have little children, you tend to spend most of your time with little children in a house doing little children things. And for some people, that is so fantastic. For an extroverted soul that hungers for deep connection, it was like living in a desert. <laughs> And church was a place that I loved before I had children. I got to connect with people and share testimony, talk of Christ, sing. It was like my favorite place ever. And then suddenly I had children and church became a place where I just felt inadequate. I felt drained. I felt tired, exhausted. I felt frustrated. And it was just... A really hard challenge. I specifically remember one time, Jack is probably about five years old at this time, and he is angry. I don't remember what in the world he's angry about, but most times during some point at church, he would get really angry. And at this moment, he's screaming because he's so mad because I won't give him whatever he wants. So I have to walk out of the meeting, you know, and everyone's like, oh, there goes Jess and Jack again because this was a many time occurrence <laughs> and I'm out there and I'm trying to use my kind voice. Okay, Jack, please calm down. Um, how can I help you? And let's take our breathing. What can I do? Please use your words, write all these things while on the inside, I'm like, ah, I just need you to stop. <laughs> right. And a sweet gentleman, who has the best intentions comes out and he basically tells me all the things I'm doing wrong. 
is coming from a place of love. It really is. He wants to help me. He wants to share with me his superpower of doing all the things that parents are doing wrong. And and I just feel crippled in this moment because I'm so humiliated as it is. I'm so insecure about being a mother even when my kids are not screaming, I just have all of these insecurities. I'm just spiraling down. I want to dig a hole and just disappear. And this man, through his actions and words, validates all of my insecurities. And he basically is like, oh, let me deal with this. I'll show you how to do it. So he takes him into a room. He has a conversation. And of course, like Jack is just astonished that this man would suddenly chat with him and he calms down because it's an astonishing experience for Jack to suddenly have a different person and all this stuff. So then that validates even more that I am a hopeless parent and that I should just give up because this man who doesn't even know my son can just come over and totally shift his energy and suddenly he's fine. And clearly it validates that I'm the problem, that I should just stop trying because my efforts are equaling to making things worse and this along with many 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 other instances really really lowered my self-esteem as a mother and my ability to listen to God and to trust him that he would actually guide me in my mothering and I remember there being many times when I would just second guess all of my mothering thoughts the revelation I was receiving, but I just didn't have confidence in God. I didn't feel like he would talk to me because I was so helpless at mothering. And it just makes me think of how far I've come today because the way I approach my challenges in motherhood today are so different. Before, I would second guess so many thoughts I'd have. I've had a, I would have a thought and I feel so good about it. I think, okay, we're going to try this, this, yes. And I would feel this, this goodness, like I was being led. And then almost immediately I would second guess myself. And then before I know it, I would think it was the most terrible idea ever. And then I would convince myself that I should do the complete opposite and just do what, you know, Sister Smith is doing over there because she's perfect and everything works for her. And I would just copy her because I surely could not trust my own instinct, my own understanding of what God was offering me. And it surely couldn't be God because he probably doesn't even trust me anymore with his children because I am hopeless. And it began this cycle over and over again of receiving revelation and then second guessing myself and then spiraling into this downward darkness and then being stuck forever. And I would just be stuck and stuck and stuck. And I am so grateful that little by little during those days of having younger children, (laughs) and I do think honestly, for me, younger children was just not a space that I thrived. I know that some people, they just love having their babies and it's such a delight and they feel alive. And when their kids get older, then they're like, who am I? This is so hard. For me, I do think that younger age was just a massive wonderful challenge for me but because of that challenge because of that adversity of those insecurities that I had in my mothering it sent me on a path to know my savior in ways I would not have known him let me say that again because of the adversity that I had in my mothering All of those insecurities, it sent me on a path to know my Savior in ways I would not have come to know him. I I always tell people before the challenges of motherhood and experiencing depression, I, I loved Christ. I loved the gospel. It made me very happy, but I didn't need him. And it wasn't until... I experienced darkness and pain and suffering in my mothering that I clung to my Savior. That 
that that relationship became the most important relationship. That coming to learn to recognize and receive revelation from my heavenly father became my number one. I think of Joseph Smith, who had way, way more intense challenges than I will ever have and have ever had. But regardless of how much more extreme his challenges were, doesn't mean that his lessons cannot apply to me. So we have in Doctrine and Covenants, this is in 122, that's the section. And basically, Christ is telling him that he's he's been called to pass through a lot of tribulation and he will go through a lot more. And then he lists off all different really awful types of tribulation, which are way more intense than anything I've ever experienced. And then he says at the end of verse 7, If the very jaws of hell shall gape open the mouth wide after thee, know thou, my son, that all these things shall give thee experience. All these things. When you are amid the pain, the suffering, the challenge that feels like it is overcoming you, you feel like you're drowning just like Peter did when he was walking on water and then he got distracted by the tempest and the winds and then he started to drown. When you are in that place, look up. What happened when Peter looked up? He looked up and Christ reached in and grabbed him. And know that that drowning, that suffering, those insecurities, that betrayal, whatever you have experienced is for your experience. It's a part of this life experience that will help you become the person, the being that God intends you to be. I was just talking to my mother-in-law the other day and she testified to me that she had to go through some of the really hard challenges in her life to learn the lessons that she needed to learn. And I too have a testimony of those things. And I hope that I will remember that because as scary as it is, there are more, more challenges to come to each of us. But where will we look? Where will we reach for help when they come our way? Thank you so much for listening, for being here and for being you. If this podcast has helped you receive more light into your life, if it's helped you grow your confidence in God and see the silver linings in your life experience, would you hop onto iTunes and give it a five-star review and share it with a friend that you think would benefit too because this world needs more light. So let's all seek light and shine bright.